Hi all. So welcome to the twelfth class of module one. So in this class uh, we will be talking about gate drive circuits. So so far we have talked about different types of switches and we know how why, why we are using. So these switches we need to switch on and switch off, right? That's why we call it switch. So gate drive circuit is how. So you have told that you have been told that MOSFET will be having a gate and then emitter collector some is gate drain source. So this gate need to, some pulse need to be given to the gate so that it is switched on. Okay, so a gate driver is actually a, a power amplifier that accepts a low power input. So it's actually working as an amplifier that accepts a low power input from a controller IC and produces appropriate high current gate drive for a power device. So, this is, you know, this is a MOSFET switch, which we have already learned. So, a gate driver means to the gate, to the gate terminal, we are giving something. What is it? A low power input from a controller IC and we are switching it on or either switching it off. So, you know, that semiconductor devices are part of modern power electronic systems. And these systems utilize many gated semiconductor devices such as transistors, FET, VJT, MOSFET, IGBT, which you have studied. And then uh, for switching elements in power supplies, motor drives. So these are actually the applications. So the MOSFET and IGBT are two of the most popular and efficient semiconductor devices. So based on the switching frequency, so you know that switching means turning on, turning off. So there is a particular frequency that we should provide for turning on and turning off. So based on that switching frequency, we will choose the, and the power rating, we will choose the MOSFET and IGBT. And they are used for medium to high power. So high power means we go for IGBT and medium means we normally choose MOSFET. So MOSFET means medium power and if it is for high power we use IGBT. So that, these are the two cases. Then as an introduction I would like to say the primary function of a drive circuit is to switch a power semiconductor device from the off state to on state. So you have a switch for example the MOSFET given here it was off. So what the driver do it will either switch it up from the off state to on state. The drive circuit is the interface between control circuit and the power circuit. So power switch means we already talk about a controller. We uh, we should control when the switch is on and switch is off. So we have we have studied earlier semi controlled switch, fully controlled switch. In the beginning, we have seen where, where, the, where we can control both the turn on and turn off like that. So the drive circuit amplifies the control signal to levels required to drive the power switch and provides electrical isolation. So we are also already provide also providing electrical isolation because if you see the syllabus, you might have seen the drive circuits are of different types, optocoupler type, the isolation transformer type. So when required between the power switch and the logical level signal processing control circuit. So they also provide electrical isolation. And often the drive circuits have significant power capabilities compared to logic level control. So you might say we can just use a logical circuit and switch on, but the power and the switching frequency is why we go for drive circuits in particular. So uh, this can come as a, a three mark or five mark question. The need for drive circuits, why we need a drive circuit, what does that they do? So they minimize the turn on and turn off time so that the power device spend little time in traversing the active region to the active region where instantaneous power dissipation is large. So we, we, we don't want the switching to be at the active region for a long time. So, so, that, so how that can be done? Because we need to minimize the turn on and turn off time. So switching should happen fast. In the on state, the drive circuit must provide adequate drive power, example, base current to a BJT or gate. So, you know, BJT means emitter base collector and MOSFET means it will be gate source to keep the power switch in the on state where the conduction loads are low and provide reverse bias to the power switch to minimize turn off time when we are turning off. So, turning on and turning off. 
to ensure that the device remains in off state. So these three are the main functions of the drive circuit. So first one, minimize turn on and turn off time. So what they do, the on state, it provides adequate drive power to keep the power switch in the on state where the conduction losses are low. So during on state, conduction losses are low. And we need to, when we want to switch on, we need to provide a reverse bias to the power switch to minimize the turn off time. So that off, turning off happens very quickly. So this actually is the basic circuit. You have the control circuit and in the control circuit, we go for the gate driver, which in turn drive the power converter switch. And then we get the load according to our requirement. So electrically isolated control terminal for each device. Okay, so MOSFET and IGBT, they have a voltage variation we have seen it already. So what exactly is the driver circuit to make it more clear? We have a control circuit here and then there will be a gate driver which in turn gives the pulse to the uh, gate or the base terminal depending upon if it is a transistor or a MOSFET or IGB. So it provides an interface between control signal and power circuit and it's also called gate driver. So it's actually small signal electronics which we have seen. So why do we need a driver circuit? Same thing. To ampli so we need to provide control. We have a controller to that controls whether the switch is on or off. So what the driver circuit does, it amplifies the control signals to level required to drive the power switches and also to ensure fast turn on and turn off. That is the main function of the driver circuit. So it amplifies the control signal to our based on our requirement. It also ensures faster switching, turning on and turning off. Very important. MOSFET and IGBT typically requires voltages between 10 volt to 20 volt to turn it on and initial high current to charge parasitic input capacitance. So when we studied about the structure of MOSFET and IGBT, we have talked about parasitic input capacitance. The capacitor needs to be discharged during turn off. So during turn off, this parasitic Capacitance need to be turned off. And BJT require continuous current to on. The initial high current is needed to reduce the turn on time. And second function is it provides electrical isolation between control circuit and power circuit. We have seen the block diagram now. Okay, for safety reasons and elevated emitter of the transistors. So mainly safety also is coming as a reason here. So there are different kinds of topologies, gate driver topologies. So one is the based on the output signal produced by the driver. So we call classifies as unipolar and bipolar. Then based on the coupling, so one can be directly coupled or we are using an isolation transformer, electrical isolation between logic level control circuits and the power device. And based on the output connection, whether it is parallel, serials or cascaded, Driver circuits connecting parallel with the power switch and then other one driver circuits in series with the switch. So two cases. So based on the output signal, based on the coupling, whether we are using any transformer or something, isolation is there. And then output connection, series or parallel. So we see, we can, uh, now we will talk about a MOSFET drive circuit. So you know controller, then comes the driver circuit and then the switch, right? So here we can see that output transfer transistor so we, you have a transistor here of the comparator controls the MOSFET actually so you see this is the MOSFET and the transistor is actually controlling the MOSFET so when this transistor is off the MOSFET will be on and vice versa transistor off means MOSFET on when the comparator is on so this setup is on that is comparator we are using is LM311 when the comparator is, is an op amp circuit, right? So from the control circuit, we are talking about the driver circuit. When the comparator is on, it must sink a current that is VGG by R1. So this is the voltage is VGG. And this is the current R1 that that current should be, it should act as sink. And to avoid large losses in the drive circuit, R1 should be large. So this is suitable for low speed and low switching frequency applications. So we can see when B1 is high, Q1 contact, VGS is pulled to ground and MOSFET is off. When B1 is low, so we are talking about the comparator. 
then v1 is low q1 will be off vgs is equal to vgg and mosfet is turned on same thing we explained here effectively the power to turn on the mosfet comes from external power supply vgg this is vgg so this is how mosfet drive the circuit and then we can talk about isolation also like isolation using a pulse transformer then isolation using opto coupler opto coupler is acting so those who have done hardware circuits might know about these things how to drag the gate 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 circuits or you will do when you do your final year project so isolation is there and then from here we are giving the pulse to the gate so this table actually talks about different types of comparator switches thyristor bjt fet gto igbt igct so some of you some of them you have studied bjt igbt and all you have studied so you can see that availability state of technology voltage ratings so voltage rating is very important then current rating switching frequency also very important you can see that for igbt switching frequency is 100 kilohertz whereas for bjt it is 5 kilohertz thyristor is not available not applicable actually then on stage voltage drive circuit simple so these are the very common things you should know it may not come as a so nobody will ask you to draw the uh, uh, table for that so you should be aware where igbt what is a switching frequency what gto what is a switching frequency like that so uh, explaining up to couple of more uh, you can see so opto coupler and isolation transformer is mentioned in your syllabus right so signals come from signal from the logic control logics and we have a light emitting diode so that is very important so this light emitting diode emit the light that is focused on the optically sensitive base so this is the photo transistor and this is the optically sensitive base within the photo transistor and this turns on and that in turn provide the gate pulse and smith trigger change its state so we have a smith smith trigger here and that it will be changing its state and output of the smith trigger will in turn trigger the opto coupler output and can be used as control input to the isolator drive circuit so you have the isolator dc supply here the input to remainder of isolator drive circuit comes here and power switch. so you have a reference so we compare it and then give the pulse and same is the case with isolation transformer here we have a kind of isolation which can act as a protective circuit also so it is small and lightweight switching frequency is high due to ratio is around 0.5 if switching frequency is decreased below the tens of kilohertz range a baseband control signal directly applied to the transformer primary becomes impractical so you have the logical level control circuit so logic is what you what you create based on the your availability so based on what you, your requirement and that logic circuit is given to the isolation transformer and that in turn will be input to the isolation isolator drive okay, so i hope you understood what is mean by a gate drive circuit gate drive circuit and how that helps in turning on and turning off so why we need a gate circuit and these two example isolated isolation transformer and opto coupler so that is very important thank you